Today, we're going to address the most common arrhythmia, atrial fibrillation. And we're going to ask these questions. Number one was, what is atrial fibrillation? What types of atrial fibrillation do we have? How common is it? What causes it? And what are the symptoms? And how can we be sure do you have atrial fibrillation? We're going to end up with a quiz time. The normal beating comes from an area in the right atrium called the sinus node is really the natural pacemaker. In the atrial fibrillation, the impulses originate in the pulmonary veins and the left atrium. And uh, what is atrial fibrillation? Atrial fibrillation is a disorganized uh, electrical activity, the atrial, the upper chambers of the heart, leading to a regular, regular pulse and loss of coordination between the upper and lower chambers of the heart, the atrium, and the vent ventricles, the pumping chamber. And the normal beating uh, heart is called sinus rhythm. We have these P waves preceding each QRS, and the beat-to-beat -beat intervals are perfectly regular. The P wave is really uh, activity, recording the activity of the upper chambers, the atrium, the QRS is electrical recording of the ventricles, the pumping chambers of the heart. What are the types of atrial fibrillation? We have uh, three types, paroxysmal, persistent, and permanent. Paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, they come and go and terminate spontaneously uh, without any other intervention, usually within uh, seven days from the onset of symptoms. And persistent atrial fibrillation, they last more than uh, seven days uh, and uh, do not stop spontaneously. We require a chemical or electrical cardioversion or deliver a small shock across uh, the chest to uh, get you back uh, beating normal. And permanent atrial fibrillation is also called chronic atrial fibrillation. It's when a decision has been made by you and your physician to live in atrial fibrillation forever. And this is a very important concept because atrial fibrillation begets atrial fibrillation. So it's not a good option. Uh, leaving atrial fibrillation now because you may be doing okay and then six months from now or a year from now uh, try to get you back into sinus rhythm because the likelihood of succeeding will be less and less. How common is atrial fibrillation? The most common arrhythmia in adults increases with age. It's estimated 2.7 to 6 million people in the U.S. have atrial fibrillation and this number is expected to double by the next uh, decade and affects about 9% of the people uh, 65 and older and costs a lot of money, $26 billion a year. What causes atrial fibrillation? Uh, any type of heart disease can lead to atrial uh, fibrillation. In fact, problem with the valves, problem with the, you know, the heart muscle itself, the sac around the heart, all this could lead to uh, atrial fibrillation, coronary artery disease. Uh, any valvular issue, there are four valves in the heart uh, to the separate the upper chambers from the lower chambers and the other two, the aortic and pulmonic valve, separates the heart from the large vessels. And if you have any stenosis or regurgitation in any of these valves, the aortic stenosis, the aortic regurgitation, mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation, all of this would lead to uh, atrial fibrillation. If you have weakness in the heart muscle, cardiomyopathy will certainly lead to atrial fibrillation and uh, congestive heart failure. If you have inflammation on the myocardium itself, the heart muscle itself called myocarditis, or on the sac or on the heart called pericarditis, all this could cause, in fact, uh, uh, atrial uh, fibrillation. And then we have, have systemic disease, the most uh, common cause of Atrial fibrillation is high blood pressure, hypertension, but diabetes, obesity, sleep apnea, even thyroid disease, the hyperthyroidism, when the thyroid gland in your neck is working too, or too much, it would lead to atrial fibrillation. So what are the symptoms of atrial fibrillation? It can vary from asymptomatic patients to very debilitating symptoms. And in fact, about a third of patients with atrial fibrillation have no symptoms, are not even aware of it. And it may be diagnosed in a routine exam or people who are going to have surgery and have an EKG and they're found to have atrial fibrillation. But the symptoms are palpitations, pounding, uh, skipped beats, uh, lightheadedness, dizziness, and even fainting if your heart 
uh, is going too fast and could cause obviously shortness of breath, uh, dyspnea, could aggravate any underlying heart disease or coronary disease, could cause chest pain, angina, could, and is associated with a lot of fatigue and lack of energy. People don't really feel well when they are in atrial uh, fibrillation. How do we know for sure that you're having atrial fibrillation if you have palpitations and pounding? Well, you can give you a monitor uh, that you can keep it for 48 hours called a halt monitor. You can give an event monitor if your symptoms are less frequent that you can keep it for a month. And nowadays we have um, new technology, even Apple Watch, the latest editions can actually record the EKG. There is a monitor called the CardioMobile who also uh, you can use anytime that you have symptoms and uh, document your EKG on your uh, phone and costs 120 bucks or so. Um, and if everything else fails, we actually have an implantable uh, loop recorder. We could inject a monitor, small monitor under the skin. We can monitor your heart up to three years. In conclusion, if you suspect you have an atrial fibrillation, if you have uh, symptoms of atrial fibrillation, palpitations, uh, pounding, shortness of breath, uh, uh, unusual fatigue, please see your doctor. Your brain and your heart will thank you. And it's uh, quiz time. Why by the uh, way that fibrillation, if you have, even if you have no symptoms? Uh, what are uh, complications of atrial fibrillation? Well, we'll address these questions on the next uh, video. And remember, your health is too important to be delegated to others. Uh, let's take uh, control. If you like this video, uh, subscribe to my channel, write a comment, ask a question. I publish these videos on the second and fourth Friday of each month. See you next video.